running everywhere here. Welcome weirdos to another location in Erie, New England. The old Newgate prison in Copper Mine is located in northern Connecticut, East Granby to be specific, and was began in the early 1700s to try and mine copper ore from the mountain. There used to be far more structures than you see now, and most of what was here are some of the early stoneworks from the 1700s and the outer wall constructed in the late 17 to early 1800s. The main guardhouse on the property was reconstructed and turned into a museum and interpretive center. We both love a good diorama to let you know exactly what a place would have looked like. And here, even the old tavern across the street is complete. It was 1707 when construction of the mine began. It was created by digging a vertical shaft and then tunneling horizontally and making sure there were air shafts for ventilation as well. However, this place had a lot of problems over centuries and it started at the beginning. It was three clergymen who put together the original company to extract ore, refine it, and cast it into copper bars. The way in which the copper ore was extracted made for minimal profits. It was all done amateurishly, broken out by hand, and then it had to be shipped to England. British legislation at the time prohibited the ore from being smelted in America. So while it was a mine, there's no furnace on the property. And those shipping costs to send the ore to England made it so that within four years, the first mining venture went bust. Oh my God. Look at the nails in you. Exactly. Even some doors believe to come from the four floors, four story cell block. And it bears the hard initials of past tourists and perhaps some prisoners. Look at that. Who knows when these people put their names on it. That looks prisoner to me. That's deep right? and good. New people leased the property and leased the mine. More skilled people were brought in to help extract the ore, but it still had to be hauled off to Hartford and then New York City and then to England. So there were no return profits every time someone tried to dig copper out of this massive hole in the rock. In 1773, Connecticut General Assembly needed a prison to house its convicts, and it needed to be a central one. So three men visited the location and determined that creating lodging rooms in the mine would make a perfect and formidable prison, impossible to escape. The colony of Connecticut purchased the last of a lease and constructed the infrastructure inside the mine to make a prison. A small blockhouse was made over the main shaft door, and that door was a mine shaft, the only exit or entrance 40 feet down. By December 1773, a John Hinson became the first convict imprisoned in the caverns with a sentence of 10 years for burglary. However, not a month into his sentence, a massive snowstorm struck, and the man was able to escape because his rider die showed up with a 100-foot rope and he climbed out the well shaft. Hinson was able to escape his bunk with his few possessions after his female accomplice walked through the snow with the rope coiled around her shoulders. The hole in the ground prison was escapable. Upgrades were made and securing an iron gate and stone over the well shaft and also putting two guards out to guard the prison at night makes me wonder why no one was guarding the prison at night in the first place. I fit. 
it. She doesn't have to worry about watching your head. I, I do. Oh, that's my little, own little cell. This must have been built for gnomes. These might have been like some of the severe punishment cells. This would be the cell I want right here. What'd you find? This would be my cell. Oh. <laughs> I have to look out this window and see some beauty. Ghost children running everywhere here. Yeah, mostly <laughs> children. Kind of where we just were, right? Yeah. yeah. There's my cell over there. Hey, everybody. I wonder if this place is haunted. There's any sort of ghostly activity. The old Newgate prison seems like a lot of trial and error before things attempted to get better, but they were never better. Throughout the American Revolutionary War, the late 1700s, the place was used to put loyalists, those in sympathy with the crown, into prison. The tunnels and shafts had been turned into cells and there's even a solitary confinement cell at the end of one long passageway. And still a shackle bolted into the stone. Just the psychological fear of being imprisoned in this place was enough to turn loyalists into patriots. There were numerous escapes from this place as well. It is said that of all the inmates held in captivity during the war, around half escaped in some capacity. After the Treaty of Paris in 1783 and the end of the Revolutionary War, the federal government stopped using the place as a prison and it became a state prison. This was around 1790 to 1802 that all the newer buildings were put together through brick and masonry, and those are the ruins now that surround the property inside the stone wall. Prisoners were put through forced labor, including nail making, coopering or making barrels or woodwork, blacksmithing, wagon and plow manufacture, shoe making, basket weaving, and machining. However, it didn't last very long. In 1827, the prison was closed and people were transferred to the Weathersfield State Prison, which no longer exists, but it was above ground. After a few more mining attempts, once again, to get this copper ore out of the ground were unsuccessful. In the 1830s and 50s, the place was bought by private owners and turned into a tourist attraction around the 1860s. It has been an historic attraction since and was acquired by the state in 1968. It's now on the National Register of Historic Places and is a National Historic Landmark, where you too can go inside all of the different jug cells under the main guardhouse and the dark, wet mine itself. Thankfully, there are stairs now, not a ladder, but there are bats. Thank you for joining us in the old Newgate Prison and Copper Mine of East Granby, Connecticut. Stay weird.